now it's uh, defense if you wish to call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The defense calls Yvette Fernandez to the stand. Yvette Fernandez? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ms. Fernandez, if you could make your way to the witness chair here. And if you would raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Right, Please have a seat and state your name for the record. My name is Yvette Lemoyne Fernandez. You may begin your questioning. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Fernandez. Good afternoon. Could you tell us how are you related to Mr. Fernandez? He is my husband. Since 2009, I made him a prisoner. <laughs> um, in, let's, I want to take, back, take you back to uh, the events that transpired around August 21st, 2020. Okay? Could you please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what um, what day, and if you remember time uh, approximately, that you arrived uh, in Lyon County and why? I don't remember exactly the day. I know it was a weekday. Um, we arrived the, the day before or the same night. I think it was the same night. It's really been a while. We were coming to visit his brother that he hadn't seen in about six or seven years. And we just wanted to come visit and that's why we came to Ed Eddieville. Was he uh, arrested on the same night that you arrived or was it the following night? Do you remember? I do not remember if it was the same night or the following night. Okay. So could you tell us what transpired in the hours before that fateful uh, stop. We came, we came to dinner over um, his, his brother's house, his brother's and his sister. He hadn't seen his sister in a very, very long time, I think for more than seven years. So it was really nice having that family get together. And she cooked up a big dinner, him and his brother um, were outside for a while and then they came inside. And I think, I'm not, I'm not, this is my side of the story, right? So they had uh, two beers. My, I saw my husband have two beers, and then we had this really big dinner. We chatted for about three hours and so, and then like usual, um, we have always coffee after dinner. So we had a big, co uh, everybody had coffee and we just keep, kept chatting. We had some dessert, and then we left. When we left, it was pretty dark outside. It's really, really dark around here, um, around 9 o'clock that time. So it was around 9, 9.30 that we left. Um, let, let me just stop you right there. So, uh, prior to your uh, departure from his brother's house, mm -hmm. did you have anything to drink? Coffee and water, because I had just had surgery and I cannot drink alcohol at all. So you did not consume any alcohol? No. Okay. So after you left, who was behind the wheel? My husband. Okay. And you said after he had the two beers, there was a lengthy period where you drank coffee and chatted for a while. Well, we had dinner first. So after the beers, we had dinner. We ate dinner, a big heavy dinner. And then as you know, the evening goes on, you chat and everything. And then it was time to go and everybody says, does anybody want coffee? Well, us Spanish people, we always drink coffee at night. So the answer was yes, yes, and yes to the coffee. So we had coffee, chatted for a little bit more before we left. And after you left, what happened? A couple of, just a couple of blocks, I, not even a couple of blocks. My husband says, man, I gotta pee. And I go, right, turn the car around and, and go pee at your brother's house. And he goes, no, I think I can hold it till we get to the hotel. 
And a couple of more down the road, he goes, man, I really got to pee. And I go, right, turn the car around and go to your brother's house. No, I can make it to the hotel. I can make it to the hotel. We, he did not make it to the hotel. And then he says, man, I got to pee. I'm going to pee on myself. I'm going to pee in the car. And I says, you're such an idiot. I'm sorry. Sorry, honey. I'm sorry. But okay. he stopped the car. He pulled over and he peed. And so I got out of the car, you know, to see if I can block him or whatever. And then we got back in the car and we took off. And what happened after that? Seconds. I would say maybe 20 seconds later we get pulled over. And what happened after that? The officer approached the car immediately. Um, we had already the registration out and of the car because it's a rental and stuff. And we had all the paperwork and we saw the strolling lights. And so the officer comes over to my husband's side. And he, we, my husband rolls down the window. We gave him the license and registration immediately. And then he starts to ask my husband, you know, does he know why we stopped? He, we, we, he got stopped. And then... Do, do you remember the conversation? Um, exactly the exact words, I do not. I do know that he asked my husband, you know, had he had been drinking. And my husband said, I had two beers for dinner. We were visiting my brother, who lives um, over here on Oral. Um, I think it's pronounced Oreo. And the officer said to him, you know, asked him a couple more questions, took the license, went back and came back. And then he, put, he was very polite. Um, the officer was extremely polite, and he says to me, ma'am, I just want to talk to your husband in private, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask him to step out the car. He stepped out the car and then went to the back. And you stayed in the car? I stayed in the car, yes. While they were behind the cruiser? Yes. Or behind your vehicle, excuse behind me? Behind our vehicle, yes. Um, at any point, do you remember anybody else arriving on scene? Yes, um, 10, 15 seconds later another car pulls up and there's three images in the back. I could not see the other person's face because they were in the back, but there was from two bodies, they became three bodies in the back. Did you happen to overhear any of the conversation between the three bodies, as you so put it? At one moment, my husband got very loud because I guess he got upset and he says to the officers, you're telling me to do it Your one Honor, way. I would object to hear your response? I'll rephrase the question. Okay. Um, what happened next after you overheard the conversation? Afterwards, so now you know I'm gonna say nothing about the conversation. Am I understanding? Yes. Okay. That's so correct. afterwards, uh, they come over. My husband's in cuffs. I see him in cuffs. I start to cry because you know we're on vacation and what's going on. And the officer says to me very politely again. He says. Ma'am, you know, we're going to take your husband in. Objection, Your Honor. Here's it. Sustained. Um, did you know what Mr. Fernandez, your husband, was getting arrested for that night? No. I was not told what he was getting arrested for, and I was just told that it was a routine. Objection, Your Honor. Here's it. Without stating, Your Honor. I apologize. Without stating what you have heard, simply I'm asking you from your own personal knowledge, um, the things that you have learned while sitting in the car while your husband is being taken away, did you have a chance to learn from anyone on scene as to why he's being taken away? No. My assumption was that he was being arrested because he peed. in public and I did not know anything else I was not told anything else so I did not know anything else after your husband was arrested what happened after that the officer gave me a phone number uh, again since I cannot save the conversation but he gave me a phone number to call and he said he, you know it's gonna take a couple hours so that was it, and then I started calling the number, and I had to drive myself to the hotel, which was maybe like a block up the street. So the car was relinquished to you? That is correct. And you drove the car back to the hotel? That is correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. I have no questions of this witness. Okay. You may be excused. Thank you.